Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our journey to health and wholeness together. My name is Cynthia Pinkston, and I'm the health ministry leader at the Capital City Seventh-day Adventist Church in Indianapolis, Indiana. We're located at 1801 East 49th Street. And on behalf of our pastor, Kevin Rogers, and our first lady, Marnitha Rogers, I just want to welcome everyone who has joined this evening, um, those who have taken time out to watch us live, um, but those also who will watch us later. Uh, we are recording, um, so you will have access to, to this presentation at a later date. But I want to thank you, and I trust that you'll be blessed by all the presentations that we have lined up this week. Um, tonight is our first virtual presentation, um, but it's actually day two of our journey to health and wholeness together. We actually kicked off our journey yesterday with a faith walk, and um, it was such a blessing to have everyone come out together and walk their faith out and talk to others in community about their faith journey. And uh, we're hoping that it's the first of many faith walks to come because there's something about coming together and talking about our faith uh, with others and being out in the open air. And it was just such a blessing. So if there's anyone who is watching even this evening who was on that faith walk, please share your experience and um, we'd love to hear from you. In addition to that, I'd love to know where you're watching from. So if you don't mind just putting that in the chat, we'd love to know uh, who you are and, and where you're watching us from. So again, we have an exciting lineup this week of information um, that's really gonna help move you through your own personal health and wellness journey. But the most important piece, and I'll emphasize this the entire week, is the journey and each step along the journey and and walking on the journey together. So health and wholeness is the goal, but how we get there is the incremental steps that we'll take together. So I wanna encourage you to not walk this journey by yourself. You have an opportunity even now to share this link with someone who you believe would benefit and be blessed by listening to these presentations. So I want you to even now pause and think of someone who you could share this link with and do that now, if you could, um, that would be wonderful. Um, I wanna just to kind of talk through, you know, the, the intention of this week is really for us to focus on the various dimensions of our health and wellness. We know that we are a whole person and we know that there's, there's multiple um, dimensions to who we are. And we serve a father in heaven who, is uh, he was he was aware and concerned about those practical aspects of our life and every um, part that makes us a whole. And his desire is for us to live whole and restored and live abundantly. And so that is my desire for each of you as you walk on this journey with us. We are going to pause at this time and I'd like to just open it up for um, prayer and invite the Holy Spirit to be a part of every aspect of this presentation tonight and every aspect of the week ahead. Good evening, everyone. My name is Harold Lumsey, um, elder at Capital City Seventh-day Adventist Church. And if we could just for a moment, bow our heads, pause for prayer to invite the Holy Spirit in with us. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you and we praise you for another day of life. We praise you and thank you for this opportunity this evening to continue. We started yesterday and continue this journey, Lord, and we're asking for uh, just perseverance. We're asking for wisdom. And we're inviting the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us in this walk um, to better health. Lord, we're just asking that you, that the Spirit bless each person that is participating this evening. 
Bless especially our uh, speaker this evening as he shares um, pertinent information for our health and movement. Lord, and we're just praying for each person that is joining us either this evening live or those that may join us uh, later um, as they as you catch this presentation at a later time. Be in our hearts and minds, lead and guide us. May we apply the things that we learn even this evening to our practice and our everyday life to enhance not only our uh, physical bodies, but our mental state and our spiritual frame of mind and our relationship and walk with you. And we pray this prayer in Jesus name and for his sake, amen. of movement and our guest speaker this evening is Neil Davis. Neil Davis graduated from Oakwood College, now Oakwood University in 1994 with a BA degree in history while minoring in communications. After graduation, he began his teaching career as a history teacher. A weightlifting session with a friend would drastically change the trajectory of his life, causing him to develop a passion for health and fitness. And I can so relate to that. Uh, after working as a fitness trainer with elite athletes and changing people's lives through inspiring transformations, Neil returned to school to earn a master's of science degree in exercise science and health promotion from California University of Pennsylvania. He's been an educator for 26 years, a teacher, a coach, and an administrator, and currently serves as an adjunct instructor in the natural science department at Northern Virginia Community College in Woodbridge, Virginia. He's a wellness Wednesday. He has a Wellness Wednesday and Fitness Friday segment on several social media platforms where he addresses various subjects in health and wellness. He is a speaker and a lecturer who desperately wants to see individuals become the best versions of themselves as it relates to their health and wellness. I would like to welcome Neil uh, and thank him for joining us this evening on our journey. Uh, and we look forward to all that he has to share with us this evening. All right, we may be having some technical issues. We'll, we'll just pause for a little bit and hopefully Nils joining shortly. Well, while Neil is getting uh, connected, I'll, I'll tell a little bit about how I actually um, went to school briefly with Neil at Oakwood. And many, many years now later, uh, I listened to him on a, another presentation on, on the benefits of movement. And this was probably about a month before I reached out to him. And as you know, this vision was coming into reality, this whole health and wellness journey week, um, the Lord just placed Neil on my, on my heart and, uh, I reached out to him kind of impromptu and, and he responded with an astounding, uh, and a very quick yes. And so I'm just so thankful for, um, him just being willing to, to accept this invitation. And I know personally what God can do with a simple yes. So I am looking forward to hearing what he has to share with us. Okay, I'm going to also ask if, uh, Alex, if you can put up the, the flyer for the uh, week of wellness activities, our, our journey, I'll kind of talk through what we have coming up this week. And hopefully whet your appetite for more. We want you to join uh, and continue with us throughout this journey. So... Oh, there's Neil. So we'll, <laughs> we'll walk through that later. So <laughs> welcome, Neil. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. You missed your introduction. Hopefully you heard it while you were trying to get set up. So uh, I said yes, lots, of good, lots of good things about you. So you can take it from here. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Um, just very excited about always sharing my passion, which is uh, health and wellness. Um, um, as she mentioned, I've been involved 
uh, with it for now over 20 plus years. Um, I've had an opportunity to be an educator, to, to be a personal fitness trainer. Um, and so I just enjoy helping people become the best possible versions of themselves. So just, I'm glad to be here. And I just wanna talk for a moment about the benefits of movement. There are just so many benefits for those who've seen me on my Wellness Wednesday segments. If I've trained you personally, um, you know how, I, how much I like to talk about these benefits and why it's important um, to, for your quality of life. So I just wanted to um, see if we can get started here. We've had some connection issues, but um, I think we'll be ready to rock and roll and to, and to move on. So if um, gentlemen, if you have that for me. All right. So, and talking about the benefits of movement, why should you exercise? So is there anyone who wants, why you should exercise? Maybe someone may could put in the chat some of the reasons why we think it's important for us to exercise. All right. In the chat. So I know that there are people who say, well, it's important to exercise because maybe with weight or something of that nature, or maybe because of how healthy, um, much healthier you're going to be. Several different reasons uh, for why people exercise. Just want to focus on uh, these reasons. All right. Now, according to the Centers for Disease Control, one in four adults sit for more than eight hours a day. So we're talking about a sedentary lifestyle. We're talking about people who work um, at a desk job or something of that nature. And now with people working from home um, where you can work from home in your pajamas and you really don't get much movement, that is a serious problem. So one in four adults are sitting for more than eight hours a day. Uh, the next thing we're looking at is when you're talking about a completely sedentary life, that can be very dangerous for your health. Um, I happen to be in my 50s. So I grew up in a time during a time where we played all types of sports on the block in the summer we didn't have video games uh to play when i was growing up at that point um and so we played all the time so whether it was baseball during baseball season or basketball or football or kickball or we just would go to the park and would play tag or whatever it was there was always some type of activity now you're looking um where you have people um who are um being uh, children who are just being raised by whether it's the television or video games that they have. If we could go to the next slide, please. You'll find where there are people who are doing, uh, doing that as well. So that becomes a major, major issue when we're talking about just leading that sedentary lifestyle. So the next thing, when we're talking about increasing your physical activity at any age can help lower your risk factors for serious health conditions. So now we're talking about these chronic illnesses and we know that they um, are disproportionately affecting those who are black or Hispanic or minority. Um, and so it's even more important to make sure that you're exercising so we can do something to kind of shift uh, this, this pattern that we see of chronic illnesses of people who are having chronic illnesses simply because they chose not to move. So that's a problem that, uh, that, we're, that we're running into. Next slide, please. So if you're looking, Next slide, please. All right. Seven reasons why you should move every day. So we're looking at, at reasons why. So I talked about some of them before. So it can provide a sharper memory and thinking. That's very important, especially as we age. We know Alzheimer's is, a, is an issue, a major issue. Helps with weight loss and maintenance. So when we're talking about your the way your body is composed, your body composition, it's important to make sure that we're doing all that we can because we know there are several different problems that arise from that. Um, it can provide more energy. We know that we want to have more energy with, when if you're someone who's always tired, uh, you feel like you're always sleepy, no matter how much sleep that you got, um, weight can be an issue when got, or movement can help with that. Um, can help you get better sleep. We all know we want to sleep better. We think of the king of pop, Michael Jackson, who had a problem 
sleeping, which ended up leading to his fatal demise. So we know that sleep is, is an issue for many people. Um, it, it aids in developing healthy muscles and bones, good for pain reduction, that's important, and then it can brighten up your mood. So again, these seven reasons, and we're just gonna um, go over them very quickly. Next slide, please. Now, provides a sharper memory and thinking. So in looking at it, we're going back, next slide again, please. Endorphins, we may have, may have heard of this term, endorphins released during exercise not only helps you feel better, help you think better too. So again, when we start looking at Alzheimer's and Alzheimer's prevention, we start thinking about what are some things that we should do? One, we know we should keep our mind sharp. We know that we should try to be active. We, you know, we've heard the term, an idle mind is a devil's workshop. Um, we know that that can definitely be a problem when you're not using your mind to think. And so people want to try to stay as sharp as possible for as long as possible. So exercise helps with that as well. Um, it's also known to improve brain health by improving uh, the delivery of oxygen and nutrients. So that's important. Oxygen and nutrients that are going towards your brain come from movement. And then finally, now we're talking about emerging research shows that uh, there's uh, a link between exercise and the prevention of age-related cognitive decline. We know certain decline is just going to come as we age. Um, I know that as, as my mother aged, for example, which she'd forget who was who, things, just little things of this nature, and you're forgetting things. Where'd I put my keys? Uh, where are my glasses? And they're on top of your head, these types of things. So we know that just there are age-related things that happen. So it's important, again, exercise is something that helps with that. Again, when we're talking about Alzheimer's prevention awareness, it's important to make sure that we're doing that as well. Next slide, please. Now, also, it helps with weight loss and maintenance. So it's important to make sure that we are doing, all, again, all that we can to maintain a certain amount of weight. When we start talking about weight, I know we, we're in a time period where there's body positivity and things of that nature. I'm not even necessarily talking about that. I'm talking about what we can do to be a healthy weight. Because when you're healthy weight, now we start talking about greatly or drastically reducing uh, your risk for certain chronic diseases and illnesses, type two diabetes, um, stroke, many type, different types of cancers and things of that nature. There's something also called metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome consists of three different things, high blood pressure, so uh, consistent high blood pressure over 130 uh, and over 90, where you're diastolic and systolic. Um, high blood sugar, and then also for a male, a waist um, measurement of 40 inches or more, for a woman, a waist measurement of 35 inches or more. These three things for sustained periods of time can lead to several different chronic illnesses and diseases. So now we start talking about, again, type 2 diabetes, many different types of cancer. We start uh, talking about um, uh, stroke, heart attack, cardiovascular disease, those, those types of problems, many of those arise because of carrying too much weight. So it's important to make sure that we're doing that, make sure we're getting regular exercise. Again, at least 100, it's something that I speak of often, getting 150 minutes of moderate to intense activity of some sort. So if that means for 30 minutes, you're going to exercise for 30 minutes, five days a week, that's your at least 150 minutes. If you want to split it up to 35 minutes for four days, that's fine. But we want to make sure that at the very least, you're doing some type of moderate to intense activity. So if you're going to walk, that's fine. If there are no knee issues or back issues or, or any heart problems, then we will have to work on making sure that we're getting a pace that is a pace that will allow you um, to make sure that you're fighting off the calories. Um, and, and that's very important as well. So it's important to make sure that we're doing that. Um, again, it helps with your metabolism. We know that that slows down. So we know we talked about cognitive decline with our brains. Now we know that there's we're going to, muscle um, loss will come as we get older. And there's also our metabolism slows down. So all of these things happen as you age. And the way to combat these things happening and really having a negative uh, effect on you is to make sure that you're moving. Next slide, please. All right, now, activity can provide more energy. So we wanna be more energetic. I'm sure you've been around some people who are 
seem like energizer bunnies. They always have time uh, to do as much as possible. Exercise can help you to be more energetic. Um, if you have children who are active and you want to be more active around your children, it's important to do that. If you have work that you want to do, even uh, work around the church or uh, things of that nature that are going to require you to be more energetic, it's important to make sure that you're getting movement to, to see that, that that can happen as well. Uh, it makes it easier to just do life's daily tasks as well. So it's very important to make sure, again, that we're moving. We talked about brain uh, cognitive decline, muscle loss, and metabolism. We know your energy the energy decreases as well as you get older. So we're, we're fighting against that. Next slide, please. So we want to make sure that we can do that to provide more energy. Next, we always hear the term, I want to sleep. I slept like a baby. We see the, the happiness on this baby who, who's getting some great sleep. So we want to make physical activity in the morning and early afternoon. We know uh, can reset your sleep-wake cycle, allowing it to trigger sleep sleepiness a few hours later. So again, it's important to make sure that um, if you're someone who, depending on what time you work, um, if you can get some exercise and some movement before that. So even if you did your workout in the morning and just went for a short walk uh, before you're planning to go to bed, maybe an hour, hour, hour and a half before, now you have an opportunity again uh, to, to kind of um, come down a bit from, from your long day. And this exercise is going to help with that as well. So that's important to make sure that we're doing that to get the, uh, a sufficient amount of sleep and exercise helps with that as well. Next slide, please. It aids in developing healthy muscles and bones. So the person who we see on the slide there is someone who is in their 50s. Um, so again, for those who say, well, um, you know, with this movement, it's difficult. I'm older. I have children. So this is a person uh, with four children who is an older, um, who is in their 50s, um, who has the healthy muscles that we see um, right there uh, just from doing that particular exercise. So studies show that female seniors, female seniors who strength trained were positively affected, uh, affected in their hip bone density. What does that mean? We know, I, I know from experience, my late grandmother, my maternal grandmother um, had osteoporosis. And as a result, when she fell, she lost a lot of her sense of independence. And so when we have falls, falls can, can do severe damage to your body if your body is brittle, if your bones are brittle and weak. If you have not been getting the movement that you need, a fall can take away your independence. And when people lose their independence, now we start looking at um, the cognitive decline really starts to come in. We see uh, there's more aches and things of that nature. It's harder to sleep. All of these different issues start to come about because of that. So the hip bone density um, is strengthened as a result of it. Stronger body can handle everyday physical stresses of life. My mother was someone who was a great cook. She had issues as she got older when just being able to reach um, up to a cabinet to get certain ingredients to cook. Just little things of that nature. For those of you who are grandparents and you want to lift up your grandchildren, but there's maybe some chronic pain or, or something that goes with that. Not being able to, to be involved in some of their activities and things of that nature. So it's important to make sure that that's something that's going on, that we're doing that. Okay. Uh, next thing, strength training significantly slows natural month lo uh, muscle loss. So we've, we've talked about movement. We're going to be talking about cardio as well as strength training. Next slide, please. Okay. Good for pain reduction. All right. So a good friend of mine is a pain, uh, was a pain, is a pain management doctor. So it's again, it's important to make sure, um, and they see tons of patients um, because of chronic pain. Exercise and movement is a good way to reduce that pain. The pains and aches that we get, and we simply sometimes will say, oh, it's just because we're getting older. That is not necessarily the case. If we're having this movement and we're doing this, it is a great for pain reduction. Can reduce your pain more, better than bed rest ever could. So if there's something where a doctor prescribes bed rest, hey, I want you to rest, that's different. But just to say, well, I'm in pain, and so because I'm in pain, I can't do anything. That's not something that we want to have. All right, if you're living with chronic pain, even taking a walk around the, the house can help. So all of those things are important to make sure, again, talked about cognitive decline, 
um, with our brains. We talked about slowing metabolism. We talked about the natural muscle loss, all of these different types of things, pain. We want to make sure, again, um, our body composition, how much weight we're carrying, whether it's a healthy weight. So all of these things, again, we're talking about all of these um, great benefits that come from movement. If we can move on to our next slide, please. It can brighten up your mood. No one wants to be around a sourpuss, someone who is just always in a bad mood. Exercise can be a great thing to help um, with your mood. Um, moving uh, more is good for your body and your mind. Exercise it can be a remedy for depression. Depression is one of the biggest reasons why people drop out of school for students. Uh, depression is something that can uh, lead to a failed marriage. Uh, depression is, is something, uh, good evening, Denise, something that can lead um, to problems on the job. It can lead to poor performance. Um, so again, a brightened mood through exercise can help that. Now, it may be that, um, you know, you're, you're at a point where I used to play teen sports, for example, and I don't do that anymore. What exercise um, can I do that I like? You find something that you like, whether it's swimming or cycling or something of that nature. Uh, being in, in nature with God and, and seeing all the wonderful things he's created. Maybe that's something you want to do. I in particular like to lift weights. So that's something that I enjoy doing. Um, you want to make sure you're finding something. And it's a great way if, if, if your marriage might be going through some problems or you're having problems connecting with your children. That's a great way to do it as well. And it can it can brighten up the mood by involving everyone into this movement. So those are some wonderful things that we can do as well. Next slide, please. Um, a few other things. People with chronic pain conditions and people with depression often have lower than normal levels of endorphins. I talked about these end endorphins earlier and how exercise helps to bring them out and all of the benefits that comes with it. So that is one of the things as well. Living a healthy lifestyle, it's key to improving your mood. So again, think about it if you feel that you've been kind of grouchy lately or you've been kind of grumpy, let's try some exercise to help uh, elevate that mood. If you haven't been doing anything in a while and you figure I'm going to be incredibly sore, you'll be sore for a little bit. But once you get to the swing of things, you'll notice a, a, a serious change. If we can move on to our next slide, please. Types of exercise. So we're going to focus right now on cardio. So we have walking. Again, I talked about that. That is something that takes it doesn't take any money to be able to do that. So if someone says, hey, I, I can't afford it, you can walk. Um, if you live in a place, the church is in, is in Indianapolis. You know, I happen to live in Columbus. It's cold there. It will get cold eventually. You drive to the mall and you walk around the mall. If you know that you have a problem with shopping, maybe you might see if there's a school that will allow you to maybe walk around in the gym. If you have a child, let's say, that has a practice or whatever the case is, and you need to, to walk around, do something that's going to get you to move. Uh, running is good. Again, if you're someone who wants to maybe train for a 5K. Um, my church, my former church in Washington, D.C. at Capitol Hill, Seventh-day Adventist, we had a very serious runners club. So quite a few people ran there. Um, and that's a way uh, to be involved in ministry as well. If you want to combine ministry with movement. Um, cycling, again, I talked about getting an opportunity to, to ride around and to see, um, you know, all of, of God's creation and just to kind of get away and to think. Um, Joey Kibble from the group Take Six is someone who's big in cycling. I believe he just had um, a race uh, the other weekend. So those, you know, some examples of, of things that uh, cycling, I know there was a cycling thing done in Allegheny East Conference, um, which is Pennsylvania and Maryland, DC and Virginia, that area where there were people who were riding around um, and were doing uh, cycling in, in order to uh, put a focus on being healthier and, and making sure we're getting more cardiovascular exercise. Aerobics classes. So if you want to join a gym and find where there's a, a movement class where you can go, if you're a senior, Silver Sneakers, I'm sure is available. And you could do Silver Sneakers at the YMCA or one of your local gyms. Um, if you're someone who's a little bit younger and you want to take the class with the person with the ponytail or the person with all of the energy to try to keep up, you can do that. You can take a spinning class. So all of those things are available to you. If you just want to stay at home and you have a bike at home or equipment at home, you can watch YouTube and, and there are countless things that you can do.
So there's so many, uh, there's so much of a variety of things that can be done. Um, I talked about swimming team sports, you know, if you wanted uh, to do that, and then jumping rope. So all of those different things, next slide please, are things that we can do in order to make sure that we're, make, we're getting the movement and getting this benefit. Extra benefits of cardio. Also great for increasing blood flow. So if these benefits weren't enough, uh, gentlemen, if you want to make sure that in your marriage, uh, we are making sure that we, we are tending to all of the needs of your wife. Blood flow, very important. Exercise is great for increasing blood flow. It decreases the chances of erectile dysfunction. So for those who say, oh, I could just take um, some of the medication, you might have some side effects from the medication that may cause a problem. So this is something where maybe you can kind of cut it off at the past where you don't necessarily need to have that. Um, uh, studies also show ladies experience a positive body image. So if there's something where, okay, I've had a few children, I don't look like I used to look, and now because of that, I feel this loss of libido, that exercise is something that benefits that as well. And we know that that is a part of what is going to make a happy marriage. So it's important in so many aspects of our life to have these benefits of movement. Next slide, please. Now, helps you control your body weight and composition. I talked earlier about metabolic syndrome. So again, just a reminder, high blood pressure. So consistent high blood pressure, a BP of 130, consistently over 130 and consistently over 90, um, high blood sugar, and also a male with a waist of 40 inches or higher. When you're measuring, measure along your belly button. If you're male with 40 inches or more, a female with 35 inches or more, you are, there's metabolic syndrome. So it is not a disease, but it's something that leads to many chronic diseases and illnesses. Leads to diabetes, can lead to cancer, uh, can lead to uh, cardiovascular disease, a host of other illnesses simply from that. So it is important, again, that we have a healthy weight. So again, I'm not talking about body positivity. I'm not talking about uh, the beauty of a full figure or anything of that nature. I'm talking about a healthy weight. So whether it is something where I don't feel I need to do it because I feel I'm beautiful as is, you are beautiful, um, I would agree with that. However, if your waist is over 35 inches for a woman or over 40 inches for a male and you're, you know, you're the velvet teddy bear or whatever the case is, it's important to make sure that you are putting yourself you're, you're not putting yourself at risk by maintaining an unhealthy body weight. And cardio elevates your fat use for energy. So we have, we all, there are fats that we consume, the fats that we have in our body. Um, the cardio is great uh, for burning that fat. All right, if we can move to the next slide, please. Improves your immune function. This COVID-19 and this Delta variant, we know that one of the huge problems is if your immune system is weak, you really run into several different problems. There are people who um, do not want to get the vaccine, and many of them are uh, people who are involved in the church. If that is the case, you want to do what's um, any, anything at your disposal to make sure your immune system is at its strongest. So although I'm not a nutritionist, making sure you're getting enough vitamin C, getting your oranges and your, and your grapefruit and things of that nature. Um, eating a lot of green leafy vegetables. Exercise also helps slow the reduction in your immune system function. It just simply comes with age. So you don't want to put yourself um, in a situation where your immune system is weakened and now you, you are, happen to get COVID and now you're having a difficult time fighting it. I've already lost several friends uh, from, high, I've lost friends from high school. I've lost friends from church who were young and healthy. I've lost some who people say, oh, well, they were just, you know, people who are, who are obese and, and older people are the only ones who are passing. I know many people who are younger than me uh, who were in pretty good shape who still uh, succumbed to it. So it's important that we make sure that our, we're making our immune system stronger. Next slide, please. Improve self-esteem, mood, and sense of well-being. So I talked, um, I touched on your mood and how it can help with that. It has, there's a long-term association with happiness. There's just something that comes. And again, it's those endorphins that we talked about uh, that come from exercising. And it found that exercise improved self-concept. So there's something about, and again, we know that we can say, hey, we are made in God's image. And because of that reason, 
That is why we, and, and Christ died for us. That is reason enough to have self-esteem. I wish it were the case that everyone just believed like that, but we know that we sometimes will be um, envious of those who have the slimmer shape, those who have the more muscular shape, things of that nature. Um, and so there is a, 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 con, a self, um, con, uh, your, your self concept of yourself. We also know, for example, that people who are overweight um, and obese are often passed over for job promotion. So it affects so many different areas of your life if we're not moving. If we can move on to the next um, slide, please. Improves your long-term quality of life. I would hate for those of us to work as hard as we could, retire at 65 plus, and then get sick, and you don't get to enjoy your retirement. It isn't, it, you don't get to do the traveling you want to do. There's always doctor's appointments and things of that nature because you didn't take care of yourself. So you did all that you can to make sure you provided for your family, and that's admirable. You did all that you can to make sure that you live comfortably, um, financially, once you're done. All of that is important. But then now, once we start talking about that, I retire, and now my quality of life um, is poor because all that I'm doing is going to doctor's um, offices and doctor's visits. I don't have the quality of life that I want because I didn't eat the way I should have eaten and I didn't move. So we want to make sure that we're exercising so that when we retire, we are um, in our best health, being the best versions of ourselves. We know that the Bible says your promise, three score and 10, 70, that, that's it. So anything above that, um, and so, again, you don't want something you retired 65 or 66 or 67, and then you're gone by 70 and you were in poor health for the rest of your retirement. So it's important to make sure that we're doing that, too, with our long term quality of life. Next slide, please. Resistance training. Why should we do resistance training? There are people who say, hey, I don't I'm a, I'm a woman and I don't want to look bulky like a man. And I know if I lift some weights, that is going to happen. Not the case. So those people who you see who look bulky, who have the deep voice and talk like men, who have the facial hair, who are obviously using steroids, that is something that they're doing or the growth hormone and the things that they're doing that make them look like men. But if you can think of whoever you find as a movie star or television actress during this time, anyone you see who's really fit, more likely than not, they are also doing some form of resistance training. And it's something that I suggest for everyone. If you go into, if you're a senior and you go into a silver sneakers course, you're going to do some resistance training. Um, we talked again about women, seniors who strength train uh, when they're hip to bone density. We talked about battling osteoporosis. It does that as well. So we're going to talk about many of the benefits. Next slide, please, of resistance training. So helps maintain phys physical functioning as you age. So we talked about the natural muscle loss that comes as you age. Um, improves your body composition, your weight management, and your body image. Talked about the same thing with our movement. Uh, strengthens your bones and protects your body from injuries. Very important and helps reduce your cardiovascular disease risk. So again, I have my late mother passed away from cardiovascular disease. So this is very personal for me because again, these are things that if we live our most healthiest life, we are greatly reducing the risk of these types of things happening. Next um, slide, please. Helps maintain physical functioning as you age. The young lady in that picture is someone who did not start lifting weights until she was 53 years old. Her name is Ernestine Dickinson. You may have heard of her before. She is in her 80s. So this is a woman in this picture in the 80s. She is in the Guinness Book of World Records as the oldest professional bodybuilder. You look at the muscles that she has, small waist and so forth. I would be very happy if I, if, if I had uh, the muscles and so forth that she has. This is someone who, sh who shows that even if you start later in life, you can still um, reap the benefits of strength training. So between the ages of 25 to 30, men and women begin to lose muscle mass. So it starts happening. We talked about it. We talked about all of those different declines, slow, slow metabolism, Cognitive decline, loss of our, our, our muscle loss. So it's important 
again, to strength train now to make sure that we're doing, uh, that we're getting these benefits as well. Slows your natural muscle loss, helps your everyday physical functioning. Again, I told you uh, my mother had problems, again, because of uh, her range of motion, being able to reach into a cabinet to get spices, to cook the delicious food that she cooked. New new um, slide, next slide, please. So it's, a, a, again, important for just those everyday things. Now, improves your body composition, talked about this as well, your weight management and your body image, faster metabolism. So while cardiovascular exercise is great, you actually burn more calories from doing strength training. So push-ups, resistance bands, dumbbells, barbells, they are going to cause you to burn uh, calories quicker than it would through cardio only. So if you just are someone who says, I want to lose 50 pounds and I'm, I plan to just lose it by walking, it's going to be very difficult to do. So it's important to make sure that we're doing all that we can with our strength training. I'm going to go over some exercises that you can do um, as well. If we can move on. To our next slide, strengthens your bones, protects your body from injuries. So again, I talked about the studies show that female seniors who strength train or positive, positively affected in their hip bone density, stronger body, you can handle the physical stresses of everyday life. So it's not a problem where certain things you have to lift and then you have problems you know, with groceries or you have problems, just everyday things that we might take for granted um, with your range of motion is limited because you didn't exercise or you're not taking care of yourself. And now that begins to cause problems as well. So let's move on again. So we want to strengthen our bones. Now, helps reduce your cardiovascular disease risk. Okay, with cardiovascular disease, we know we're talking about heart attack and stroke. So uh, for someone who has lost both of their parents, um, one to stroke and one to cardiovascular disease um, through heart attack, again, is it is something that I've seen where movement would have, been of, of a great benefit. So studies shown it lowers your blood pressure, which we know is one of the, the biggest reasons for stroke and high cholesterol. So I talked again, metabolic syndrome, 35 inches of waist for women, 40 inches for men, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. It, this is what we can use to fight that. You don't have to take the medication to do it. Uh, next slide, please. Know your equipment. So we're going to talk about machines, your free weights, your dumbbells, your barbells, resistance bands, and stability balls. Next slide, please. All right, pros and cons of machines. We're going to start with that. So we'll start about the problems that have from it, uh, from machines, because there are some people who say, I'm not sure what to do with dumbbells or barbells, so I'll just stick to the weight machines. So it has its benefits, but there are some drawbacks as well. So machines set the range of motion. So the range of motion that you probably would need to do, let's say, a dumbbell chest press, uh, the machine is a, it can mimic it to a point, but it's not going to get the full range of motion to get the fullest benefit. Um, and sometimes you might have lack of access to machines. So if you're someone who can only um, deal with machines at a at a gym with a gym membership, and the only time you can work out is when it's at its most at its busiest, that might be a problem for you because you don't have the access to the machines that you want because you're always waiting for it. Limited number of exercise machines as well. So it's not something where everyone has um, a house where you can have, let's say, your own weight room or maybe there's a, a garage and you don't use a section of it and you put it in there. So sometimes you don't always have access to it. And in the posture, some supporting muscles are used less. But it's a good isolation of specific muscle groups. So it works with that. It can be safe and less intimidating. Um, it's quicker to set up and use. So sometimes it's just a matter of adjusting a seat and putting in a pin, for example. And it's acceptable for those who have limitations. So machines has its pros and cons. Not saying don't use them, but um, it can you can get um, benefit as well from using dumbbells and barbells and um, resistance bands. Next slide, please. All right. Um, Sorry, next one. Resistance bands. Okay. So you'll see um, the young lady doing the squat. Um, she has resistance bands around her leg. So it gives her a little bit of extra resistance. So, so for those who are trying um, to, for those who are trying to develop, um, you know, with that area and strengthen that area, resistance bands are good for that. 
um, resistance bands can also mimic many of the things that you would do with dumbbell. So for example, if you did a dumbbell bicep curl where you're um, working your, your biceps, the same thing can be done with resistance bands. If I'm working my shoulders and I did a side raise, I could do the same thing with resistance bands. And again, if you're not sure, you say, well, I have these bands, I just don't know what to do with them. YouTube has several things. Um, there are personal trainers as well who could help you if you feel more comfortable with that. Um, but there's so many how-tos uh, that you can find that you can do that in the comfort of your home. You can buy resistance bands at Ross, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Target, Walmart, um, any of those types of stores. Uh, and generally not more than $20 or Amazon, uh, places of that nature. And you can get it for relatively cheap. Um, so resistance bands, you can work your entire body and get a really great workout with just that. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so again, we see with resistance band, I showed you an example. Um, for example, um, again, someone doing a squat on the left and we see someone doing a bicep curl. So again, something that can be done with resistance band. All right, next, stability balls. Stability ball could be great for your posture. As you can see on the left hand side uh, where the, the young lady is doing in the squat position against the wall. Um, and then for this young lady here, it can mimic many of the things that you could do on a bench. So if you were um, doing certain exercises, um, it's great for that as well. So again, if you say, I don't know what to do with a stability ball. Again, um, you, you can hire a personal trainer, you can ask someone at your gym, or you can find stability ball workouts on YouTube or there are books on it as well. So there's so many different things, um, resources that would give you access on how to um, work with something of this nature. Again, stability balls are gonna be less than $20. You can find them at the same stores, TJ Maxx, Ross, Marshalls, uh, Walmart, um, Target, uh, Amazon, you, it's a matter of pumping it up and you'd have access to it. And it's something, even if you wanted to, if you're someone who sits all day, it's good for your posture. You can sit and work on your posture as well while you're typing, uh, working remotely. So stability balls would be good for that as well. Next, dumbbells. So now we start talking about something. Some of you might have these at your home or you see it at the gym and you're like, I don't know what to do with it. Dumbbells have their benefits. Next slide, please. All right, we see uh, barbells as well. We're gonna talk about um, what can be done with barbells. And so you might see a rack where you have listed from 10 all the way up to 110 pounds usually for the rack there, um, or things that can be done with barbells. Next slide, please. Free weight, so pros and cons to free weight. Some of the cons can be a little bit more difficult to learn. So again, it's Sometimes easier, there, usually there are no pictures. The way you see pictures on a machine where I'm not sure what to do, I look at the picture, oh, I lean back and I push and it works my chest. Or I see this, I put my arms in here and I lift it up and it works my shoulders. Or, oh, I put my feet under here and I lift it up and it works my thighs and my quadriceps. You don't see that with dumbbells. So that can be one of the cons of it. Um, and sometimes, again, if you're lifting heavier weight, you're going to need a spotter to help you get that done. Um, incorrect form can lead to injuries. So if you see where people are doing things where they're curving their, their spine, things of that nature, um, lifting weight that's too heavy for them and doing it wrong, there are many problems that can come from that as well. And more time may be needed to change the weight. So again, it's not like a machine, I just take the pin out if I have the seat adjusted and I change the pin and, and I'm ready to go. Um, but it can be tailored for individual workouts. A lot can be done with dumbbells. Range of motion is set by the lifter. So that's something that's good for you. Exercises can be done anywhere. So I can, I can do them, again, in the privacy of my own home. If I don't want my kids to see me struggling with it, I can take it into my room and I can do it in my room without anyone having to see me struggle with that. Standing and, and sitting, postural muscles are work. So that's good. Remember, that's not something that is used during your machines. And it's good for strength and power building. Next slide, please. Leg or lower body exercises. Next slide. So we're gonna talk about exercises that we can do for this. Now, a recurring theme when it comes to lifting weights is you wanna be shoulder width apart and you want to have some type, uh, you wanna make sure that your back is straight. 
So we see the young lady doing the squat with dumbbells. She's doing what are called dumbbell squats. She holds it by her side. If she wanted, she could hold it in front of her as well. And that is something that could be done in order to perform this exercise. So she does, she does that. Now, if you say, my knees could not handle going that low, go as low as your knees will handle. I have 52-year-old knees, and my 52-year-old knees go as, as far as, as um, they can go. So I'm not necessarily squatting as low as I did in my 40s or my 30s or my 20s. So again, it's important that you, you work with your body and listen to your body. A barbell squat, something um, there's something called a Smith machine where it snaps onto it and it can be set to where even if you go down and you feel you can't come back up, there is a safety there that would allow it to, to be set there. But a barbell squat is also something that's good uh, for working your legs, your thighs, your quadriceps, so many different benefits from these particular exercises. Next slide, please. Goblet squat. So you think of uh, our sumo squat. The sumo squat is something that works the inner thighs. Okay, so that's something that works your inner thighs. Um, also works your glutes um, or your, your rear um, or your, your bottom. Goblet squats work that as well. So they're great for working all of these different leg muscles. So it's something that you want to make sure, again, you see um, for the goblet squat, she's shoulder width apart. That's a recurring theme that you're going to hear often. For the sumo squat, if you think of a sumo wrestler, they go wide when they hit their legs and lift their leg up in the air and bring it back down. Um, if you're someone who was into dance or ballet, it's, it's also called a plie squat. So if you think of a plie or, or sumo wrestler, that is something that specifically targets your inner thighs. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Your leg press. So this is a leg press machine. Um, it is something that you can see there's a machine for it, or it's something that you can stack with barbells. You're stacking with barbells, usually people put 45 pound weights on the side, but again, you can work with whatever you have. It's something that you want to try. Thank you, Mr. Rogers, or thank you. Um, it's something that you want to make sure that you try to be shoulder width apart. Again, that's the recurring theme um, for the leg press. The shoulder width apart for the leg extension. That's something that works your quadriceps or your thighs. The leg press also works your glutes as well. So these exercises focus on that. You wanna make sure with your breathing that whenever the more difficult part of the exercise is being done, that's when you breathe. If you do a squat or a deep knee bend, the going down is not the hard part, it's the coming back up. So that's when you breathe. When you're doing a leg extension where you're extending your legs, that is the more difficult part. That is when you breathe. On a leg press, when you push, that's the more difficult part. That's when you breathe. Okay? Next uh, slide, please. Lying leg curls. Now we're talking about the back of your legs. So lying leg curls is something, again, this is a machine generally that is going to be um, at your, your local gym. So if you have a gym membership, that's what this is for. Um, you will notice that the person is lying down and is lifting up uh, the legs uh, to work those particular hamstrings. Um, and so that's something that you want to make sure that you're focusing on doing that. You're not picking the head up to use your body weight to help. You want the hamstrings to do all of the work. Um, the lunge is something that is, um, you'll feel it in your knees. So if your knees are poor, um, you, and you can't go as low, that's fine. You go as, as low as your knees will allow you to go. If you feel problems with balance, just um, have something where you can have your hand there, where you go down. That's the easier part. The hardest part is the coming up. That's when you breathe out. When you go down at your lowest point, you squeeze your glutes, you squeeze your hamstrings, you breathe out, and you come back up. All right. Uh, next slide, please. Hips, your hip um, abduction. So we're talking, it's the same as a side leg raise. Can be done lying on the ground and it's good for your glutes as well. Um, and it can also be done on the machine there. We see where there's an attachment to the person's ankle. So this is someone who wanted a little extra resistance. But it's something where you can just do your hand on the side of a wall and you simply lift your, lift your leg up. You want to lift it up and point the toe. 
you notice the young lady's toe is pointed. And so you lift that leg up, you point that toe, you breathe out as you lift the leg up and you squeeze your hips and your glutes. And you, you can do that. Um, the hip extension or a back leg raise is something where the person is working, again, the hamstrings or the back of the leg and the hips, and they're lifting the back of it. Same thing is being done. You're pointing the toe as you come up. You're breathing out as you lift that leg back, and um, you see that the person is shoulder width apart. So again, very important. Next slide, please. Calf raises. So this can be done without weight, where maybe let's say your, your hands are on a wall and you're just lifting your leg up. Ladies, um, think uh, wearing a high heel. You're coming up. And again, these calf raises, um, again, the movement is good. Um, aesthetically, it's something that's good when you are wearing your heels uh, to develop your calves. You can do it um, on a machine. We saw that leg press machine where you're pushing with your legs. You can do it where you're putting your toe, your full foot isn't on there, but your toe is there and you're pushing like that. It can be done there. It can be done standing, holding weights. If you have balance issues, lean up against the wall and hold the weights for that resistance and lift your legs up. So it starts again, shoulder width apart. That's that recurring theme. Um, for those of you who have trained, I'm sure it's, it's ringing in your ear. You know, I'm always talking about it. Shoulder width apart. Um, you see that there and the person is lifting their legs and raising their legs as they go up. Next slide. Upper body exercises. So exercises that could be done. Next slide, please. Chest. So dumbbell chest press. Um, again, you see the person is shoulder width apart. They're breathing at the top of the movement, the hardest part. You're breathing as you come up. So that's something that works your chest and a barbell bench press. For ladies, again, who think, I don't want to look like a man, just think defying gravity. So we know gravity starts to set in when you get to a certain age. This chest press is a lifter. So we know that, that God is a lifter. Well, this, you know, he's a lift. This, is, he, this movement is a lifter. So think lifting up um, things that want to go down. We want to, to bring them up. So this is something that's good for it. If you want to stick with the dumbbell chest press, that's fine. Barbell bench press is generally something that men like to do. Um, but ladies, if you want to do that, you can do it as well. Uh, a regular Olympic bar is 45 pounds. So that is a starting spot point to think of when you're doing that particular exercise. Next slide, please. Dumbbell chest fly and dumbbell pullovers. Again, shoulder width apart, that recurring theme. With the, with the flies, the person, as they come in, they're breathing out. And as they breathe out, they are squeezing the chest muscle. So whatever muscle it is that you're working, you want to flex or squeeze that muscle every time. Um, you'll notice that their head is low. They're not picking their head up to, to bring any undue pressure to their neck or to help their body weight to use to help them to lift that particular weight. Um, for the dumbbell pullovers, you will notice that, um, ladies, if you think of um, wearing a tank top there is a um, or when you're wearing a bathing suit, or something maybe even strapless. There is a, a fatty deposit that can develop right in that area. This The dumbbell pullovers work and the dumbbell chest flies work those particular um, places. So it's important to make sure that you try to include this um, in your exercise routine. And with the pullovers, you keep your arms straight throughout because you're working the chest. When you bend the arms, now you're working the back of your arms or the triceps. So you keep your arms straight throughout, take it back. We breathe out on the way back up. Again, that's the more difficult part. Next slide, please. All right, for your back, lat pull down. So your latissimus muscles, we call them lats for short. Um, ladies think the, bra, uh, the, the fatty deposit under the bra strap. Uh, for men, it gives you a more leaner look. Um, so many men want that V um, shape where there's a smaller waist. And then it, it, it's, it goes up and it, it actually makes you look, it gives you the illusion of looking actually bigger than you are because of the, the waist uh, to that back ratio. So this lat pull down is something, again, it's a machine that generally is going to be used um, at a gym. Um, and you can do a reverse grip where you, with a, with a lat, usually it's a wide grip and you're pulling down 
to the top of your chest. As you pull, you breathe out and you squeeze your back. If someone were to have their finger right in the middle of your back, you should be able to pinch their finger as a test to see if I'm doing them correctly. And it's something where you control the weight as you bring it down. Um, with a reverse grip, you simply um, go with an underhand grip and you bring it down. Now, you can also do it with certain different apparatuses that are closer in and bring you to a closer grip. So even if you say you want to try this and someone is using that particular attachment, you can just use a different attachment and still get the benefit from that. All right. Uh, next slide, please. Dumbbell bent over rows and machine rows. So again, the dumbbell bent over row is doing some of the same thing that you would get from this machine. With this machine, again, shoulder width apart. You see that the person, when they pull their posture, you want perfect posture as you pull and straighten it out. You lean forward, you bring it, and you straighten out your posture and squeeze your back. And they're doing the same thing, shoulder width apart on those dumbbell bent over rows, and they pull. And they can be done with both arms, or you can do them with a the single arm as well. Uh, next slide, please. All right, the dumbbell row, I talked about doing it with one arm. That's how you do it with one arm. So whatever side you're lifting up, that particular leg is off the bench and the other knee is on the bench. So if I'm doing my right, I have my right leg and the left leg is the left, my right leg is, is uh, up or at that angle and the left knee is on the bench. And I pull and I squeeze and again, I'm working that area. The upright row, if you've seen Michelle Obama has very impressive trapezius muscles or traps as they call them. This is for that area, this works that. It can be done with dumbbells, it can be done with the machine where you have uh, not the longer apparatus but the straight bar and you lift that straight bar up to your chin. As I lift up, I breathe out. Same thing, shoulder width apart and you're doing, you're getting the support from doing that. Next slide please. Shoulders. A lateral raise, you'll notice the young lady has a slight bend to her elbows and she is not going any higher. Her range of motion extends to right there. She's not going too high up in the air. You might see people doing that in the gym. You're just going to this area. You breathe out, same thing. Well, she did not go shoulder width apart, but you want to go shoulder width apart for balance and you lift up and I breathe out and I flex the shoulder because that's what I'm working. So it helps with that. Front raise, you lift in the front and it's working the back of your deltoid or shoulder muscles. So the front raises can be done um, with a machine or it can be done with dumbbells or it can be done with a resistance band. All three, can you can do the same thing on all three um, with all three uh, pieces of equipment, all right? And so these are working your shoulders. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, dumbbell shoulder overhead press. As you get older, it gets a little bit more difficult. You find the range of motion uh, becomes tougher. Um, I don't lift as much weight as I did when I was younger because I feel it more in my shoulders. But a dumbbell overhead shoulder press, you, you start here, shoulder width apart, and I breathe out as I come up and I bring it in. Uh, with an Arnold press, it was named after Arnold Schwarzenegger who did it. Your palms are facing you. And as you go up, you turn them in and then you bring them back. So it's, again, working those same deltoid muscles, shoulder width apart, breathing out. So whether you're standing or sitting, they can be done either way. Um, the shoulder press, again, can be done with the shoulder machine or it can be done with resistance bands where you're sitting on them and you're lifting the bands up, although it feels a little bit uncomfortable, but it can be done. Um, same thing with the Arnold press, but not the most comfortable thing in the world with resistance bands. I probably would recommend you do it uh, with some dumbbells, right? Or with kettlebells as well. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, bent over dumbbell rear lateral raises. So those working your rear um, deltoid muscles. And then there's a barbell military press where you start right here by your chest. You lift up, full extension, you're breathing out, you bring it back. Shoulder width apart for both. Um, and again, you breathe out with the rear delts, for example, as you come up. You don't bring yourself up. You wanna stay nice and low. The arms do all the work, okay? Next slide, please. 
biceps. So preacher curl. Preacher, because it looks like you're praying. And so it can be done with dumbbells, it can be done with a the machine. There are machines that isolate it, or it can be done with barbells. Um, so many different variations on the theme in regards to dumbbell preacher curls. Most places at a gym have some sort of this for just a machine or ones where you can load weight onto it and do it with weight as well. Okay, next slide, please. All right, concentration curls. Um, if you think of the, the thinker, so with your concentration curls, you, your arm stays on the inside of your inner thigh. You lift that up and you breathe out as you do it. Um, and then with your uh, dumbbell curls, uh, you are just turning your elbows in and working that. And again, shoulder width apart. That theme is still there. All right. Um, next slide, please. Triceps, so working the back of your arm. So when you wave and you're saying, hey, there's too much movement going on there after I'm done waving, this is what works that particular muscle. Triceps pull downs or push downs. Um, again, this is a machine generally you're going to find at a um, gym, but you are shoulder width apart. And you start in and you straighten your arms out and bring them back to the starting spot. It's not something where the weight is going up high. You start in. You see where the, the person is starting uh, right there in, in, in the middle. He's already in starting spot and he goes down. Uh, the pullovers is something where you're on a dumbbell, I mean, with a, on a bench, but it can also be done on a stability ball. You can do the same thing. And with the pullovers, you bend your arms. So remember when I talked about the pullovers for your chest, you kept your arms straight, but in a dumbbell tricep pullover, you use your arms. And for those who, if I'm going too fast, my apologies, but again, if you just are saying, I can't remember how to do this particular exercise, it's gonna be on YouTube. Um, I have uh, on my site, Neil Davis Fitness on YouTube, I have many how-tos. If I don't have these particular, some of these exercises, you can find it on YouTube, how to do it, and it'll be there and available for you. Next slide, please. All right, oblique curl. So for your abdominals or your stomach, your obliques or the love handles, the muffin top that some people complain about that works the sides. Um, with your abs, you want to make sure that your chin is always up. You're not bringing your neck down and putting undue stress or strain on your neck. You want to keep your chin up as you do the movement um, for the oblique curls. If you're someone who says I have a problem getting down, you can do the same thing standing up. And again, YouTube can show you how you can do Many of these things or it could be done, some of these things could be done seated. Reverse crunches is something where you're just simply pulling your leg in and lifting it up and it works your abdominal muscles. It's good for the lower abs. Ladies, if you've had children, that can be that stubborn area that seems like it doesn't want to go away. Reverse crunches are great for that area. And you are breathing out again as you pull or you're breathing out as you go into uh, the oblique curl. Next slide, please sit-ups. Um, and that's something where either someone is holding your foot or you can put it under some dumbbells or put it under a couch. Let's say if you're home um, and you're doing your sit-ups, hands are here. I'm breathing out as I go up. I'm keeping my chin up. Very important to do. So that's something that can be done as well. All right, next slide, please. Body weight exercises that can be done with no equipment. Push-ups. This is something if you are someone who says, I can't even do one. Well, let's start doing them on the wall. And then we'll move from the wall to maybe doing it against the table. And then we can maybe move to the floor and then start on your knees if you need to start on your knees and then go to uh, full push-ups. All right. Um, next slide, please. And I'm almost, I'm almost done. I'll be able to answer some questions after. What is your motivation? Okay. Why do we want to do this? Okay. Are you doing it because you want a clean bill of health? I think that's great. You want to be able to go to the doctor and not have to hear, to hear, I am off. The, you, can, you don't have to take the medication anymore um, to get that clean bill of health, that quality of life that I talked about. Um, we know that the choices you make di dictate the life you live. So to have that quality of life, it's important to make sure that we're doing this movement. You want to look better in your clothes, and some people want to look better as, as um, in their natural state. If that's something that you want, 
then that's a motivation as well. So we want to make sure if, we're, if, if that's something that um, is, is a reason for you to do this, that's fine as well. Get stronger and leaner. You want to get stronger to say, man, I feel really weak. Um, there's too much weight, extra weight that I'm carrying. I want to become leaner. We want to make sure that I'm, I don't have this metabolic syndrome and I start getting the diseases and illnesses that come as a result. Um, maybe you want to run a 5K. You know, you're someone who says, I used to be able to run um, and it would take me seven or eight minutes to do a mile. And now it takes me over 20 minutes. And I just want to improve on that. Well, maybe that's the motivation. That's fine. You maybe you want to motivate your friends and family to say, man, there's so many people in my, so many of my friends and family that are out of shape. I think if I can start and show them that I can be healthy, that that will motivate them. That's fine as well. If you want to reverse the trend of a family history of poor health, if you have a, a family history of poor health, that is something that puts you at a greater risk for having uh, poor health as well. And then to live long enough to see your grandchildren grow up. So you want something, again, we don't want to live this long life, work all these years, retire, and then you don't get to see uh, all of the fruits that came with it, to see your grandchildren, to see your children doing well, uh, to be able to be a part of their lives, to share your wisdom, uh, all of those different things. Uh, next slide, please. I want to say that was the last. Okay. So um, I believe this is a time for where we can answer some questions. Um, uh, Cynthia? Yes. I'm sorry if I took too long. No, Please, you're I just want to make good. sure I'm <laughs> No, thank you so much. You gave us lots of information, very practical information. You told us the benefits, but you also told us how to go about incorporating these uh, these movements. So that's so important. Um, oh, and Cynthia, so for those, quick, there was a lot of content. Cynthia, yes. Cynthia, if you don't mind, and I have to put in a plug, since I'm wearing the shirt uh, for Oakwood College, now University, I learned those skills were honed on the campus of Oakwood College, now University. So again, if you're Thinking about where to go to school if you're in high school or in college and you want to think about transferring or you want to talk to your children about going there, I just want to put in that plug. Okay, I'm sorry. Go on, Cynthia. <laughs> All right. No, that's perfectly fine. A plug for Oakwood University. <laughs> yes, um, ma'am. <laughs> so, no, I was just going to say there, there was obviously a lot of content, and I, I put in the chat that if you go to C City, SDA.org and register for the journey uh, for health and wellness journey together, then you will be able to have access uh, to this content. We can send that information to you by email, as well as additional content that we will have throughout the week. So there's benefits to you registering and registering other individuals. So uh, another plug for registering. I know that sometimes we, we, we have a little bit of a difficulty taking that extra step to register, but it definitely is beneficial. And an additional incentive is that if you register um, and you actually have two guests registered, then you and your guest, because they'll be able to indicate who referred them, mm -hmm. both will receive a, a digital annual subscription to Message Magazine. So we, we want to incentivize and encourage you because there's lots of information that you can receive if you take that extra step. So we're yes. going to... We're going to go. Article I've written for Message Magazine as well. So yeah, I saw uh, great magazine, wonderful information, um, and yes, so register. Let's go. It's so much information to get. Yes. All right. So we we have quite a few questions actually that have come through. Let me scroll through. So the very first question I saw was from Denise Brooks, and okay. her question was, "Why do men seem to lose weight faster than women, even when they diet and exercise together? So when they combine diet and exercise?" I know it can be frustrating, and so sometimes it it, it depends. So again, let's say for example, I don't know if anyone has watched The Biggest Loser, for example, where people who are uh, severely um, overweight or obese. Um, it would work out. And then at first, it just seemed like the weight just came off with no problem. And then eventually, it started to slow down. So in some cases, it might depend on where the person is starting. So if he's starting at 300 pounds, and you're at 200, and let's say you he is 100 pounds away from his ideal weight, and you are 50 away from your ideal weight, because he, for example, might be so much more overweight, it might come off quicker for him. Um, 
in some cases, there are certain fitness principles um, that need to happen in order to make sure that you are getting the results that you want. So for example, let's say Cynthia um, started out and she was saying, I'm going to get on this treadmill and I'm going to walk at a speed of 4.0 with the incline of 2.0. And she does it. She starts losing some weight and then sees that she's reached a plateau. She needs to have um, overload. And so the principle of overload is that your body, so her body is, is said, okay, at first, wow, I don't know what this is. This is very difficult and it's working so much harder. But after a while, it has settled in and said, okay, this is how much work it's going to require in order to get this done. And now your metabolism is slowed back down. So you're going to have to change. So if you're someone who, let's say I walk and we walk around the block, if you're averaging an 18 to 19 minute leisurely stroll, it's going to happen. You're going to have to start cutting it down to 18 minutes or 17 minutes and so forth. Because your body, in order for your body to work harder to burn the 3,500 calories to lose one pound, it, you're going to have to do that to, in order to get uh, the results that you want. So it's important to make sure that not only that, that you work hard from the beginning, but you're going to have to make changes. It might, might require heavier weight. It might require doing something faster or more strenuous than you might be accustomed to doing. But it is something that is going to help burn more of those calories than just simply doing the same thing at the same rate with the same pound amount of pounds um, in order to make sure that you're getting the results that you want. Okay. That's a, a great explanation. And I think you know that says a lot about how if we're in that weight loss, kind of mode, then mm -hmm. we have to we have to work a little bit harder. Yes. Once we're trying to maintain, it's a little bit easier. So it's always easier to get to a place eventually, obviously, where we want to maintain and we kind of avoid that pendulum of weight loss and weight gain. So but initially we, we do have to kind of increase the intensity to get the results that Definitely. we're looking for. All Definitely. right. Another question from Gloria Curtis is could you give us some examples of exercise that would be helpful for people with back itch, back issues. Okay, um, okay, Miss Gloria, I would recommend to make sure that you get a stability ball. So that I think is something that helps uh, with posture um, as well. Um, and maybe let's say I don't know, Miss Gloria, if you if you have a gym membership, but let's say you you want to exercise at home. Um, many of these um, exercises that I talked about in the presentation, um, the ones for your, your lower back, so like the dumbbell rows. Um, let's say you had resistance band and you were able to put it against something where it could hang and you can bring down. Um, that would help it as well. Um, for your lower back, also posture is important. So making sure that you're sitting correctly um, with your posture and it just be, uh, it's almost something where you want to mimic what you would learn in charm school uh in a charm school for example where you're you're trying to sit up as much as possible because if there's already back pain and it's going to be exacerbated by poor posture um that's something that is going to be a problem um and the back pain for example i don't know in your case miss gloria um back pain could also be the result of carrying excess weight it can be a back pain issue as well um so it can be something where um, if it's chronic back pain, maybe see a physical therapist because they specialize in particular for that. Um, or if it's something where um, you're seeing a pain uh, management uh, doctor and you're getting steroid injections or something of that nature, um, let's see what your medical professional uh, suggests. But again, I would suggest something um, where uh, you're working on your posture um, seeing what we can do to, to lessen maybe some weight if that is if excess weight is, is adding on uh, to the chronic pain, um, things of that nature. Maybe even be something where um, if you're doing something that's fairly strenuous, you're wearing a, a belt to help protect yourself as well. So that is something. Uh, I hope I answered that question for you, but that's something else that could be done. Okay, thank you for that. That actually brings up another point that you mentioned during your presentation, and that was the importance of proper form mm -hmm. uh, 
And so, you know, proper form over function before function is so important. Can you talk through a little bit about, you know, what would you suggest for someone who is just, you know, new, they're a novice to strength training specifically, mm -hmm. what would you suggest they do to make sure that they are focused on that proper form? Because we want to avoid injuries yes. and we want to make sure that, you know, they're, they're getting the, the benefits that they're looking for mm -hmm. um, in doing that particular exercise. What are some suggestions okay. you would have? I, I am a stickler for form. So form is very big with me. I don't care how much weight you can lift if you're lifting it wrong. Um, there's a bodybuilder named Ronnie Coleman. He was eight time or nine time Mr. Olympia, I believe it was. And there's a Netflix special on him and he's lifted poorly for so long. He's now in his sixties and has had several surgeries, has to walk with, um, mm. with canes and things of that nature. Um, and again, this was the man who seemed invincible, but he lifted very heavy weight and, and many times didn't use correct form. And so while in his early 30s and his late 20s and early 30s, he was, you know, Mr. Olympia and got all the accolades that came with it. Now he has all of the problems that have arisen from doing that. I would first suggest if you can afford it, try to invest in a personal trainer and someone who is a stickler for form, even if it's just for your initial to make sure, hey, am I doing this correctly? Am I doing this properly? Or if you cannot afford it, then you start saying, okay, well, let me go with the YouTube. I will go with the YouTube videos. I'll see, you know, I'm going to work my upper body. I'm going to get five exercises and I will go and see what the, the experts are saying on how to do this particular exercise and I will do it with them until I have it down. Um, that's something else that could be done. So um, I, would, I would recommend that. Or if there's a book, there are, bo there are books on it as well. So if you want, need to read a book that says, okay, let me see, how do I do this? All right, do it just like this. I'll, I'll do that and go from there. So that's something else that I'd recommend um, to do to make sure that the form is correct. Because lifting a lot of weight and doing it incorrectly can do major damage. Okay. Uh, we don't we don't want you getting hurt and then you you just want to give up. Okay. Thank you. Yes. We do have another question from Sister Gloria Ford. All right. Hello, and, Miss Gloria Ford. Yeah. So she said everyone ages differently. <laughs> Some people age gracefully, others can hardly do anything because of health conditions. Are low impact exercises as effective as regular exercises? Great, Great question. If you have not been doing much you want to start with uh, low impact exercises. I mean, if we look at our development, our personal development, we don't go from infant to teenage to adolescence, right? We have to develop at our pace until we have mastered uh, that particular area until we have aged out of that. So when you see people who have, who go along too far, so we, we look at it in life the same way. So we see somebody who is, I used to teach middle school. So, so a middle schooler acting like an adult, we know that there are problems that come with it. So that person's either smoking, um, they are taking drugs, they're, they're, they're drinking, the language they're using isn't appropriate, uh, they're promiscuous, things of that nature. Why? Because they're, they thought that they are at this level and they're not. Not saying that that is something to aspire to as an adult. But in the same vein, if you say, well, right now, this is where I am physically, I can't do much. Well, you do what, you're, what you can do. You do that until you strengthen it. So, for, so Ms. Gloria, if you feel like your upper body, for example, is strong, like I said, with push-ups, you start on the wall. I'll do 10 push-ups on the wall until I feel strong enough to maybe move down now to the table. And I have my hands on the table, my feet are out, and I do that until I move to that. And we just move on. It's, it's the same way if I was teaching a reading class. So we'd go level one, level two, level three. I wouldn't get a child who doesn't know anything about, hadn't read anything and say, okay, here, read this level three book when they just need to maybe learn uh, some basic phonics or things of that nature. So it's important that we move at our own pace at what level of, of where we are physically. And again, I don't know where you are physically, Ms. Gloria, but 
wherever you start, start where you are and say, okay, I can do this. Um, don't go to let, let's say the class, the spinning class and you can't keep up. Um, and now you say, you know, forget it. This is too hard. I can't do it. Or I'm going to do this body pump class or whatever it is. And someone talked me into doing it and I went from nothing to this and now everything hurts. I hate it. I just don't want to do it at all. So if there are chronic illnesses, we find ways to work around that to still try to strengthen things. Um, it, it might require doing some more walking right now first than the strength training. And we do just a little bit of that and more of the cardio. And then we just kind of work into it to where maybe it's a, at a 50, 50, whatever it takes to move at your pace, you know, your body, um, work at that pace. And I think that would be the best thing for you. Okay. Thank you once again uh, for just kind of breaking that down and helping, you know, us to understand where, you know, we can start where we're at and, yes. um, you know, any movement is, is good, right? You know, yes, I, I think sometimes we, we think, you know, very lofty that we have to, you know, run a half marathon or, you know, we have these great expectations, but I like to think of movement as you know just something that you interrupt your day with yeah so if you can you, you know so if you can be that intentional about okay after an hour of sitting sedentary at my desk i'm mm -hmm. going to get up and go down the stairs or you know go walk around the house and just let that be your mindset that our bodies were meant to move yes. and and so if we're intentional about that and thinking about it throughout the day it just makes it easier um and and all that counts all all that little movement Correct. yes and set, set goals. We know, I know too often that people are not quitters. So I know that in my master's program, my hardest class was anatomy and physiology, and I had to work through it. My, um, my exercise physiology class was, was hard. If you're psychology, you had to take statistics. Um, and then your engineering classes, there were things that were difficult. Your law class, whatever it was, there was something that was difficult, but you wanted the benefit from whatever that goal was bad enough. So you work the extra hours to get the house that you wanted for your family. Um, you work to make sure that the car that you drive is a car that you don't have to worry about taking to the shop every week. There was something that you did that was uncomfortable that you didn't particularly care for because you knew that if I do this, I'm going to reap the benefit of doing it. And as a result, I didn't quit. So I hated the job, but my child needed diapers. And so I worked the job until I got a better job to make sure that I provided uh, for, my, for my child. So in the same light, we know, even if you hate it, you say, I don't like exercising. I'm in pain. I, I, I'd ra much rather not do it. I don't wanna run. I don't wanna walk. I don't wanna lift anything. Well, we know what happens if you don't. So let's try to do it. So if it's something that we can do, let's let's say I have this, I'll set this is the goal that I'll have. And it might not be a weight thing. It may just be, I'm going to be active. I'll get my 150 minutes. And then the next thing might be, I'll do this goal. And we want to keep trying to work on these goals. And we know that as a result, we'll reap the benefits. Okay. All right. Well, Neil, thank you so very You're much welcome. for just coming along with us on our journey and uh, just you know pouring into us and sharing this information. And I, I know that it will be a blessing for those who are hearing right now and those who will hear in the future. So thank you once again. Oh, you're welcome. I also want to make sure that we post in the chat. You mentioned that you have a website, Neil Davis Fitness. Mm -hmm. It is okay. on... Facebook, Neil Davis Fitness. It okay. is on Instagram, YouTube, uh, even with LinkedIn. So there's information for all four. I'm on Twitter, but I'm almost never on there. So there is a Twitter account, but you're more likely to reach me through Facebook, through Instagram, through LinkedIn, through YouTube. Okay. That's great. And I mean, Neil's Wellness Wednesday and Fitness Friday segments, they cover so many different areas of health and wellness, not just fitness. So if you are active on social media, please check them out uh, because you'll get some good information there as well. So 
I, again, I just want to thank you. And um, we are, we're, we're going into to day three of, of our journey and I'm so excited tomorrow. We will focus on nutrition and uh, we have a great, just, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm so looking forward to every single day. Um, Carol Robleski will be our presenter for tomorrow. And she has such a dynamic personal testimony uh, and journey to share with us about her weight loss journey and how she was able to maintain a significant amount of weight loss based on transitioning to a plant-based whole food uh, diet. And so she has a passion for sharing how to make plant-based cooking and prepping easy, um, teaching that it's affordable and, you know, obviously the benefits, you know, there's, there's numerous benefits. So she's going to talk through all that information and share with us and, and actually do a cooking demonstration. She has four recipes that she's going to demonstrate tomorrow. And then if you register, you will get those recipes and a few additional recipes that she's wanting to share with us. So don't forget to uh, sign up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Don't forget to uh, share the link, like on social media, um, and just make sure you just don't keep this to yourself, okay? We're on yes. this journey together, and it's so important that you grab hold of someone and bring them on a journey with you. So, and I also want to vouch for Miss Carol. So I had an opportunity to meet her. She has some great things. Um, Donna Boyd Gomez is on Wednesday. So yes. A former classmate of mine, uh, grew up together in Atlanta. So she has some great information. Um, and on Saturday, Dr. Eric Walsh, one of my close, close friends, from this particular place, from, uh, from Oakwood <laughs> College, uh, we'll have some more information to share. So there's some yes. great, um, some great information here on so many different aspects of wellness. And again, I thank you, uh, Cynthia, and, and the team um, from your church for inviting me. And for those who listened, thank you. Um, and um, I look forward to connecting with you at some point. Um, and uh, again, be the best versions of yourself. So I can implore you to do that. Thank you for that charge. All right. Well, we will close with a prayer this evening. And Father God, Lord, I just want to thank you so much for this day. I want to thank you for all of the, the goodness um, that you show to your children and uh, for making us uh, fearfully and wonderfully made. And we thank you so much for just um, allowing this information to be brought um, to us. And we now ask that you would give us just the strength and the power to apply everything that we have um, been made aware of or reintroduced to and reminded about tonight, Lord, that we would be intentional about applying it in our daily lives so that we can live on purpose and for your purpose and be the best version of who you created us to be. We thank you so much. And we just invite you into um, the days to come that you would just continue to pour out your blessings and, and bless um, all of the presenters who have just said yes to uh, sharing and investing with us. May you bless their ministries and um, as they move forward as well. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Thank you all. Have a good night and see you tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.